In this video, we're going to show you how to properly and safely change attachments on an excavator equipped with a hydraulic quick coupler. In this case, it is the Komatsu PC490LC. We are proud to be joined by Dave who will now go over the process and explain some common mistakes and potential problems you may run into. During the change of a bucket, you must ensure that you place the bucket in a square place to the machine so that when your lugging releases, you can roll back into another bucket in the same spot or very close to that same position. The second thing you're gonna do is remove the lock pin. First thing is to check whether the lock pin's loose. That means that generally everything is correctly fitting between the wedge coupler and the, and the lugging on the bucket. Generally, when the lock pin will not come out, someone uh, hasn't either done some homework or watched a video or asked someone a, a, an easy question. They've tripped the switch and they're out here trying to pull this out. And now you've got all that hydraulic force pushing on the wedge and you're asking your question, well, why won't it come out? In that case, what you can do is go back in the cab, trip the switch so that it reactivates the, the wedge coupler to go back into place and hold the bucket again. You can again come out and make sure that you're square to the ground. You can find yourself, oh look, now it's loose. Now I can take it out. You definitely don't ever do this in the air. There could be people standing there, there could be other, other reasons why you don't ever want to have this pulled out while it's off the ground. Most, if not all, hydraulic couplers come with a locking pin, a manual locking pin. This lock pin must be installed at all times during operation of the machine. So after that, you're going to lock this to it so you don't lose it. I'll put it somewhere I can see it. You don't want to trip on it, but you want to see it. So once you're back in the cab, you will find on your right hand side the switch that operates the hydraulics for the quick change. You're going to open up the safety lock and you're going to push the switch forward. When you hear that noise, that means the wedge coupler is slowly moving out. So at that point, you'll wait 15 to 20 seconds to ensure that the lugging is completely released from the bucket. Any sooner than that could cause damage between the wedge bar and the bucket lugging. Now you will want to curl the bucket inwards like so and lift it up. Visibly check to ensure the wedge is fully disengaged and then slowly curl out and lower the bucket until it drops out of the coupler. Always ensure that you are doing this step as close to the ground as possible. This will prevent damage to the bucket and surface once it drops. So the reason why you're going to curl the bucket is to induce a higher pressure to break the wedge free from the bucket lugging. It puts the pump into a higher pressure mode for a very brief time and causes it to break free. That is the safest way to ensure that the wedge in the wedge coupler releases itself from the bucket lugging. Now, we will go over how to reinstall an attachment. Before you start, you'll need to ensure that the wedge is fully disengaged. Lift the safety cover, activate it to the unlock side as illustrated on your switch, and ensure you hear the beeping sound which is your audible cue. It should sound like this. Wait 15 to 20 seconds minimum. With the switch still on the disengaged side with the beeping audible cue still active, line up your quick coupler lugging like so, and slowly roll the quick coupler in to engage the second lugging. Ensure that it is properly seated. Not properly checking to make sure it is seated correctly may cause damage to your quick coupler and attachment. So right now, now that we've rolled into our bucket lugging, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the wedge bar control to the lock position. So as soon as you stop the beeping, the wedge is actually trying to lock in against the bucket lugging. That's why you need to ensure both ways, when you lock into the lugging, you've waited the appropriate amount of time of 15 seconds to ensure that the wedge coupler is in the correct position. So that way you're not forcing it over the bucket lugging and causing damage. When we're satisfied that it has locked in correctly, we need to ensure that we place the safety cover back over the switch. So the, the cover's there just so you don't bump the wedge. So now, what we're going to do is place the bucket back down in that square position that we had originally make the change in. And we are going to get out of the cab. We're going to turn down the throttle on the machine. So now that we're going to install the wedge bar, we want to ensure that both the tail here and the top reach the correct positions in the wedge coupler. 
So the easiest way to do that is to ensure that this tail goes right to the bottom. You can roll the lock pin forward and then roll it backwards to find the easiest position to lock it in and ensure that this pin is correctly located. This keeper pin must be installed to ensure that the lock pin stays in place, even though the hydraulics actually keep the bucket in place. The lock bar stops the wedge from coming back at all times. That way, if the switch is tripped or there is a hydraulic failure, this is actually a, a redundant piece, but must be in place at all times. So that way the double redundancy is, is there. And that's how you properly change attachments on this Komatsu PC490LC. Want to learn how to perform regular maintenance on machines like this? Check out the Tecmo HD channel. If you're interested in renting this machine or anything else, visit us at rentone.ca if you're in Canada and rentoneusa.com if you're in the United States. To learn how to change attachments on skid steers, adjust track width or track tension, or anything else related to heavy equipment, check out our other videos. Want a tutorial on anything else? Let us know in the comments.